Okay, now that we've uh, scanned our computer, we know we've got 50 something hours on the motor since I saw it last. Uh, first thing we're going to do is change the gear lube. Okay, so uh, gear oil change is pretty straightforward. We've got our, uh, our drain plug here and our fill level or vent here. Um, some of these ones had a vent forward. This one's labeled as the vent. I take them both out. Uh, so that we don't get any air pockets up here um, when we're filling it up. But to begin with, uh, we're going to change that oil and see what we've got going on for water. Now you want to do this every season, every year. Uh, if you use your boat seasonally, you want to do it at the end of your boating season. Um, well, this is coming out nice and dark, um, not milky at all, so there's no water in that oil. Um, I'm just going to point out that the, uh, the drain plug gasket is not on this plug, so it's still in the housing there. Um, I will want to get that out. We don't want to double up the, in the drain plug gaskets when we uh, put it back together. Same thing here. Um, no uh, no drain plug gasket. And we'll take this vent one out as well. Ooh, that one's a little tight. Okay, and I have to get in front of the camera for this one. Ah, we might need to hit that one with a hammer. Yep. Okay, that one's very tight. What are we gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so I can get a better shot at this. And I'll get a bigger hammer. Now I'm just going to uh, trim this back down so that we get everything draining out the bottom, nothing sitting up in the front of it. Now I'm making sure I get my drain plug gaskets out. So that's three gaskets out. Now I know I'm not doubling them up when I put uh, the new gaskets back in. Now my normal procedure for this would be to, uh, because it's here for a full service, I would remove the bottom, the bottom end, and put it up in our stand, and I drain the oil while I'm replacing the water pump impeller. I'm doing it with it on the motor still so that I can just do uh, one video segment on changing the gear lube. Um, it's, it's part of the whole series of the full service. You'll see it's all in a playlist, um, but this is just changing the gear lube. So if you just want to change your gear lube, uh, don't want to inspect your water pump impeller, or grease your drive shaft splines or anything like that, that's why I'm doing it like this. But normally I would, uh, the drive will be coming off um, and normally I would do it all in one hit. 
I've still got a little bit of oil dripping out there, so we'll let that run for a couple more minutes. Uh, three new drain plug gaskets. Now these Mercs, they have uh, multiple types of drain plug gaskets. They've got these. These are a fiber one. Um, and they also have these yellow um, nylon ones with the metal in them. They're sort of a composite. Um, these are great. Um, I've seen people reuse these ones. Um, but we generally, uh, we just re we replace the drain plug gaskets every time we change the, uh, the gear lube. Uh, and we use the, uh, the fiber ones. Um, never had a problem with them. So to put the oil back in, we use a uh, we use a gear oil pump. Uh, put on a bottle. We're using um, the Quicksilver high performance gear lube. Um, Quicksilver is a Mercury brand. It's the Mercury aftermarket brand. Um, so we screw our fitting into the uh, into the bottom. Connect the hose up. And we pump the oil in from the bottom. This pushes all the air out the top um, through the vents um, so that you don't have any air pockets in there. These motors take, um, by memory, about 300 mil. And then we've got just a little bit of oil just starting to show itself there. So I generally let it sit for a minute or two once I see the oil, uh, just in case there's any other air bubbles or whatever floating around in there. Get my uh, drain plug gaskets ready here. So I've just given it a whole nother pump there. That's two more pumps and it's not coming out again. So there was obviously an air bubble there. That was three full pumps before it started coming out again. And I see on my uh, fill on, on my bottle here, it's, that's 300 milliliters. So I'm confident that we're full there. Plug in, snug it up, and then another pump pushes it out of the front one. So now I know that there's no air bubbles in there. There's a bearing in the top here, and you want to make sure that you don't have air caught around that. Otherwise you burn that bearing out. Hose off, move this out of the way. With the plugs in the top, very little comes out the bottom when you remove your fitting. I'll just trim that up so I can get the screwdriver on it properly. Now I use a little wrench. Uh, this is a six inch wrench. Um, just to snug it up, not super tight. You can feel the gasket compress a little bit. And we'll snug these ones up as well. If you haven't noticed, I run the camera. <laughs> 
as well as uh, do the work. So I apologize for some of the sloppy camera work. This isn't a high production show. So there we go, three plugs tightened up, three new drain plugs and fresh gear lube in there. So that's all that's involved in changing your gear lube. Wipe the excess oil off, dispose of the old oil properly, and uh, you've changed your gear lube. Uh, I think next we shall uh, let's pull that lower unit off. So just before we uh, pull the lower unit off, I thought I'd go over um, how I hammered that tight drain plug out there. Uh, just in case you didn't quite catch the technique I used. So this is a drain plug here, uh, pretty typical uh, screwdriver slot. Now it was starting to slip when I was undoing it. Um, it was too tight in the threads, obviously hadn't been out for a couple years, some corrosion. Now you saw me hammer on it, but what I did was I hammered this, let's put the screwdriver down. The drain plug turns this way. I don't know if you can see that. Um, to undo it, there we go. Turns that way to undo it. So what I did was I used my screwdriver as a punch and it gives me a nice flat, like you can see I keep it sharpened, gives me a nice flat surface right there. And I only punched up on the corner of the screw, let me get the screwdriver out of your way, punched up on the corner of the screw to start loosening it. I didn't hammer straight onto it like that and push it in. Um, you can do that and that will shock the threads. But what I did is I just hooked up under the corner of it. I wasn't fully in the slot. I was actually just on the corner of it a little bit. Not sure how well you can see that there. And I just hit it up to start the turn. Once it, once it was broken free and uh, started the turn, then I could use it normally. So that was the technique I used there. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that technique, 